And I feel like having some hard light in your portfolio can really help you stand out from like the hundreds of other food photographers out there. What do you think? Absolutely. I was actually recently in a portfolio review with an art director who recommended I add some variety to my lighting because I had a lot of softer lighting mm -hmm. in my portfolio and they said, you know, to really kind of round it out, you might want to add some heart light looks to the equation. So that was mm -hmm. some really helpful feedback. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to That Sage where we talk all about food photography to help you build the creative career you want. Today I am so excited to be joined by my friend and fellow food photographer Joni from The Bite Shop and we are teaming up to bring you two amazing videos all about hard light. Now Joni and I are both kind of light nerds. Um, we both love playing around with artificial light and all the different things you can do with natural light. So we're gonna bring you two videos to help you add some hard light to your portfolio to help differentiate you from all the other food photographers out there. So in today's video, I'm gonna be focusing on showing you how the distance and the direction of your light is really gonna change the look of your hard light images. And then I'm gonna hand over to Joni to tell you what her video is gonna be about. Yeah, we're gonna play a little bit with as far as the size of your light. So whether you're using a window, what's the size of that window and the shape of it and that, how that can determine the uh, hardness of your light and then also playing around with some artificial light and some different modifiers which can really change the mood and look that you're going for. And then to bring this all together, Joni and I are running a week long challenge so you guys can get involved in sharing your hard light food photos with us. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get all the challenge details and don't forget to hop over to Joni's channel to watch her video too and let's jump in. Normally in food photography we're used to working with soft light which is light that is passed through at least one layer of diffusion material. This layer of diffusion disperses the light particles creating those really soft shadows that we're used to seeing in food photography. Undiffused light is coming directly from the light source so it creates these shadows with really harsh edges and a lot more contrast in our images. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of theory just to make sure you understand the principles before we hop in to a few examples. So let's take a look at what happens when our light source or our subject moves around. So starting with distance, the closer your subject is to the light source, the bigger the shadows will be. And this is because the object is blocking more of the light source. On the other hand, the further away your subject is from the light source, the smaller your shadows will be because your object is blocking less of the light source. And when it comes to direction, there are two things that make a difference to your shadows. One is the height of your light source and the other is the angle. So the shadows will always face in the exact opposite direction to your light source. So as you move your light source backwards and forwards or left to right, your shadows will move in the opposite direction. And the higher your light source is, the shorter your shadows will be, as the light is pointing much more directly down on your subject, whereas a lower light source will create long shadows. This is exactly the same as the midday or evening sun when you see this effect pronounced outside. Okay, so now we've got the theory down, let's hop in to some examples. So we're gonna start with a drink. I think drinks are a great easy starting place when it comes to hard light because their transparency allows you to create some really interesting art with your shadows. For this first example, I'm gonna be shooting this strawberry drink with a continuous artificial light without any diffusion. And I'm gonna be playing around with the length of the shadows to see which composition works the best. In order to change the length of the shadows, I simply raised my light source higher or lower. Higher up created a shorter shadow and lower down created a longer shadow. And you can see this effect really clearly in the final images. As you can see, the length of the shadow makes a huge difference to the final picture. So let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Next up, we're gonna be shooting a cake and this time I'm gonna be using a speed light. On top of this cake, I've got some sliced apricots, which I've sauteed with a little bit of maple syrup. So with this hard light, I really want to capture some really nice 
specular highlight on top of the cake. This time I kept the speed light pretty high up and very close to the cake because I didn't want super long shadows in this composition. I used a three quarter backlight to really allow the light to bounce off of the top, creating those specular highlights from this three quarter angle shot. Okay, and for the last example, I'm gonna be using natural direct sunlight. Now, when you're working with direct sunlight, you don't have as much control over the direction and the length of your shadows because you can't move the sun around. So you'll have to move yourself in your scene in order to get the shadows pointing in the direction that you want. You're also gonna to need to work pretty quickly because the sun is not gonna stop moving for your photography shoot. So if you've got things set up in a really specific way with shadows falling in a very intentional place, you need to make sure that you get those shots quickly. If you shoot at midday when the sun is at its highest, then you're gonna find that your shadows are very, very short. So if you want slightly longer shadows, then you're better off shooting in the early to mid morning or early to mid evening when your shadows are gonna be a little bit longer. As I was looking at how I wanted to light this scene, I noticed that I had this natural diagonal falling from my wall where my window ends, and I wanted to incorporate this into my scene. So I cut off the top left-hand corner of the photo with this shadow, and then I pointed everything else in diagonals, either going with the shadow or against it to create a bit of dynamic tension. So I pointed the board on the opposite diagonal, creating some dynamic tension, keeping this composition interesting. So to bring all of this together, Joni and I have created the Hard Light Food Challenge, which is gonna be running all of next week from the 15th to the 21st of July. So you can take everything you've learned in this video and in Joni's video and put all of that knowledge together to create your own hard light food photos. And then we're gonna have something super exciting happening here in a couple of weeks. So Joni, do you wanna tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So on July 25th, after we've received all of your submissions, we're gonna have simultaneous like back-to-back -back live streams, one on Lauren's channel and then one on my channel where we will be sharing some of our favorite images that you've submitted as well as sharing the winners of the Hard Light Food Challenge. So be sure to tune in for that as well. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. We are super excited. So make sure that you click the link in the description below to sign up for the challenge where you're gonna receive all of the rules and a link to a Dropbox folder where you can put your images. Also, don't forget to watch Joni's video. It's also linked right here. And we will see you back here on the 25th.